welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, just over seven years ago, I interviewed an entrepreneur here on this very program by the name of Rajan Reddy, the CEO of KZN Oils. Now, he's a man who carried out stationary business. He got into service stations. Now he's in the oil business. And it's very interesting to see how that business has changed through some very, very difficult times indeed in the last seven years. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, just to start off with, uh, just to recap the, the size of your business that we talked about, I, I've been through the archives and had a look. Now then, you said you were um, pumping 9 million litres of fuel. Yes. You said you had 114 employees and you were turning over 1.5 billion rand back in 2012. How, what are those numbers like in 2019? Yeah, it's changed slightly. Uh, we've employees are gone to over 350 uh, throughout the groups now and our turnover is in excess of t 2 billion and uh, yeah so lots of things has happened and how much uh, fuel are you pumping now ah uh, it's reaching close on to 200 million liters, liters. per annum Okay, so but how difficult has it been? I mean, a lot of businesses, especially in the last few years in South Africa, have been screaming, uh, for want of a better word, uh, because of the economic conditions, tough economic conditions. Yes. What's it been like in your business? Well, it's been tough uh, all round, but I think you know you need to re engineer yourself, and I think you need to understand the market, you follow the market carefully, and find out where the opportunity is or the lack of opportunities and and I think you've got to be you know very current with your business yes and what about uh, cost cutting and all those painful exercises that a lot of businesses have been through in the last uh, four to five years here in South Africa uh, during the process of re-engineering uh, that's it comes with you know some of your employees you can go further with them and you know lots of them you cannot go further with them uh, it's always a, a capacity issue when you're starting off a business you require certain skills and of course when you gather momentum you know some fall by the wayside and and others excel at it so every business you know like they always say the only thing that's constant in life is change so that's that's the way it is what share of uh, sleepless nights and worry have you had uh, in recent years in yeah. your business? That's practically every night. Um, I, but I must be honest with you, I absolutely love business. And I do it seven days a week. And lots of my businesses, some of them, they operate 24 hours a day. Uh, so I'm never short of that. But I only require maybe three, four hours sleep uh, a night. And I'm, I'm perfect. Uh, you know for that but yes I think if you with your businesses all the time or business or whatever is required and I think that's what um, it's all about you got to you got to really understand you know where, what you're doing you know how you want to do it and then you follow it through and that's the the best way you know it's very difficult you know to uh, be away from it, you know, so you know the modern technology. I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I make use of WhatsApp My WhatsApp groups and my email. I live by those things and of course You know, so we communicate so it's so everything is live You know that you're doing that so there's no excuses not to be Really on the ground with all your businesses. So hard-working mandatory forward thinking what about um, this theory that says also in business you have to have that real ruthless edge to make it yeah that's always comes up I must be honest with you but I haven't got that side I am stern uh, because I you know I want things done yesterday and you know I only demand 110 percent so I think it's it's more like that you know um, uh, you got to understand what you want like I said you got to follow it through and you got to do it properly and you make sure your circle is always uh, you join people that you can leverage off uh, people that can stimulate your thinking and uh, challenge you you know uh, uh, in a meaningful way so I think it's how much it's what we call your ROI in business your return on investment if you're gonna put in a lot uh, constructively and you'll get a lot out of it so 
That's, that's the bottom line. Now, let's just do a little bit more about your business journey as well. I mean, uh, I recall from the 2012 interview that uh, a great influence in your life was your grandfather, who was also an entrepreneur. Yes. How did he um, prepare you for this life? But I, I think by association, you know, you watched him, the way he would conduct himself uh, and uh, the command he had, you know, with the people reporting to him. Uh, well, mostly his, uh, his sons, you know, and of course uh, they, his daughters did the menial tasks, the support, uh, as you would think would be there. But um, you would you'd see him, you know, because this huge age difference, of course, but you know, but you'd, the memories are still there that he would sit and and he would call every, he will summon everybody to him and they'll stand, you know, in front of him and give him a feedback. On, on he had construction and he had wooden coal business and he had land and he was in construction. It's like I'm almost a duplicate in a way uh, of him. And um, for, for whatever reason, he just had that stature about him. I mean, was there anything that uh, obviously uh, the diversification, you seem to have followed him, but was there anything that you saw in your grandfather you thought, mm, I think I can do that better? It wouldn't go down too well. Uh, you know, just like any man, uh, you want to be better. And I, uh, I think I was no different, you know, uh, even as I sit here today, you, you want to do better. But I think you need to be, uh, you know, modest about what you do. I think there's lots of humility. And I think you also got to enjoy what you're doing, I think, most more than anything else. You had a very uh, circuitous route to uh, oil. Uh, you started off with a, a stationary business, if I recall. I, I was in the construction. Yeah. I, I think I'm still in the construction. Mm. Do a lot of construction uh, today. And I think the, when, uh, like when BE came in in 96, so the, the route to entry was, you know, uh, took a project on, on stationary and it's on history that I still don't know much about stationery, uh, but you can make a go of it. But then went back to your core, and I think that was, you know, uh, lubricants, you know, and then got into fuels and now into LPG. And How did you stumble into the stationery business then? You say yourself you didn't know that much about it. It's amazing when you want to survive, what you would do to survive. And I think if you're drowning and someone threw a matchstick, uh, you'll grab, not realizing the matchstick is not going to save you, but uh, you would actually do. And how humble were those beginnings when you first started out as an entrepreneur? Yeah, poverty does a lot of nice things. Huh? It removes a lot of ego and it brings you right to the ground. And I think if you, if you keep that in the back of your mind that it can always happen to you, you can always lose, you know, it's, it's finance, you know, so you make a wrong take a wrong decision and you know it can be lost uh, uh, like that so I think you know enjoy the the journey and if you can balance it and and make sure that you you know have certain assets and a whole lot of stuff so yes um, it depends the path you want to take so don't live only by your financial success uh, there's lots to life you know more than financial success more than becoming a balanced person, uh, making a difference, uh, you know, in your family, community, environment. So there's lots more than uh, this. But, you know, uh, it starts off all with, uh, you know, having a job. So what would you say has been, as an entrepreneur, has been your biggest challenge in the, in the last seven years of very, very difficult economic times? Um... Man, I, I need to be honest about this. Um, I've always been, you know, close to the ground, um, always tried to grow within my means, uh, within my financial means, within my knowledge, you know, and my partnerships. So I didn't want to stretch things too much and that you only, uh, you know, singularly there. So I think it was a progressive step, but also leading, uh, also leading, you know, not, not, I'm not too much of a follower as such. Maybe a team player, yes, I am, but also I have a good idea 
of what I want, uh, and and I work towards it, and 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 very driven uh, in that particular way. So yes, um, I I just sort of didn't go that uh, Russian roulette kind of thing, all or nothing. I uh, actually don't do business uh, under those circumstance. I'm sure there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who have maybe been suffering in the last few years yes. watching this. I mean, what would you say to an entrepreneur maybe who's thinking about throwing in the towel? Well, you know, uh, I generally deal with my depression uh, for one day only. You know, you, things don't go your way. You, you sit down and you uh, gather your thoughts and you do an introspection and see, okay, uh, this is where you could have you know, this is what you did wrong, why did you do that? Uh, and then you sort it out and then you, you go home and you, of course you finish your emails, if you can, or just sleep. You just sleep a few hours or whatever, you, you wake up, you're nice and fresh, and you say, okay, this is exactly how I'm going to start. You know, if you owe people money, the first thing you do, you get into office, you phone them and say, you know what, I messed up and uh, uh, I need to pay you, and this is how I'm going to do it. It's not according to what you expected. I'm sorry that I put you in any difficulty, or uh, I know you were counting on my money, and uh, I'm, I'm, I really messed up uh, with this, but I'm going to do my best to do that. So once you structure that, and then you go back, and you put your shoulder to the wheel, go and revamp everything slowly, you know, get the people up to speed. If they weren't up to speed, if they dropped the ball, you know, uh, and uh, lots of things that you go back yourself. Show people that you committed, you know. Show people that we are human, you know, and that we need, we all of us, uh, you know, a team, and that we need to do this together. So it's, it's, it's only you that can drive this and you are the one that is accountable, you are the one that is respected. So purely go back and nobody can deliver the message uh, better than you. So, and that's what people want to see. They want to look you in the eye and, and say, Chris, you know, uh, you know, I really, I really, and let them give you a tongue lashing. Uh, you must take it on the chin, so let them, allow them to vent. So don't get, you know, angry if they use some, you know, kind of language, but you deserve it, you drop the ball. So after that, you shake hands and say, you, you know, you do that. And that is how you earn respect, you know, in business. And people would rather trust you again, because they know, you know, the integrity is there. And I think that's what business is built on, integrity. And that is the foundation, one of the foundation of integrity in business. Arguably, you've been diversifying since day one, but you've stepped it up in recent years. Just tell me where else you're going apart from oils. Uh, yes, uh, even in oils. You know, like I said, we've gone into the retail industry. Uh, we are a branded marketer for the Caltex brand in KZN North. We've got 36 service stations and growing, so it's a lovely part. And then we've gone bigger into lubricants. We just signed a deal the other day with a, with a major oil company uh, to blend for us. So that's another huge feather in our cap. we also gone into LPG, you know, we, we're dealing with a multinational, and that's going uh, ex extremely well. So apart from that, you know, uh, I have plenty of time. I went into other businesses. We got a, a medical business where we manufacture surgical dressings and where we use local com uh, components, Champion Healthcare. So we even got our SABS mark you know, on that. So if that was not good enough, that's still running, by the way. It hasn't closed down. 15 years running. We also went now. Um, what happened was my commitment in 96, I must be honest, uh, I said that we uh, need to make a difference. And what, are we, what legacy are we going to leave in this country? Because I believe that we are the first batch uh, of this industrialization. And it's 25 years now, so we are the first batch. What are we going to give back to entrepreneurship, industrialization, uh, fourth industrial revolution, and all these wonderful things? So we said we're going to stop uh, donating monies. And now we're going to look at why is small businesses failing. So we took a very popular uh, product, chicken, in the uh, hospitality industry. 
and we said, let's look at why poultry farms cannot survive. Mm. And we took that four years from starting about three and a half years ago, and we, did, we buy local fresh chicken, and we started the concept, and I still cannot grill a chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, up till today, it was never my dream. But what I looked at and engaged with people and looked at how can we look at the cradle to grave kind of policy? How can you, you know, look at the hatcheries and then the day olds and poultry farming? And then why, can I, why we cannot take it to market? So I'm in the completed in the back end. We have a store and the, the franchise is called Colay. So uh, we've got a company store that we do all our training, all our recipes, and we were very fortunate enough to be given because of the quality of the product. Um, you know, Caltex has got Fresh Stop Outlets, and they've got their own uh, uh, franchise called grill to go So they have given us an opportunity to supply them. So we're on shop number, store number 28. Saying, you know, it's the million dollar question, why do so many small businesses fail in the first year? Why do you think that is? Firstly, business, we used to talk about you've got to have passion. That's a very, very, you know, loaded word, you know, passion, you know. It's one thing to have passion. Uh, it's the other one to have a know-how. Uh, business is a combination, you know. Uh, uh, like I said to you, in 2012, I did not go to tertiary education, so nothing about what I say is scientific beside uh, uh, streetwise kind of, uh, you know, that are there. What I've, realized, uh, what I've realized is that you've got four components of business, and three components is, is common to every single business. It's, it's about finance, it's about admin, and it's about marketing. That's your three legs to your stool, okay? And your seat is your core. So in any business, you and I, if you're in a selling tomatoes, we can talk about business. So only thing I wouldn't know about tomatoes. But we can talk about finance, we can talk about admin, we can talk about marketing. And I think this is what happens, you come uh, um, you know, from whatever background you c come from, and you think because you know that particular, you know, core, and you can be in business. And that's only 25%. Even if you know it 100 out of 100, you only got 25 out of 100. The other 75%, you know, is divided into uh, the other three components. Do you know how to market? Do you know how to take it to market, to the people? Do you understand finance? Do you understand admin? And that is where all the businesses fail. But do you think it's a question of these skills, they've got to be mentored, or do you think people should sit down and learn them in a college? Well, um, every time I find a challenge, I go back and look at uh, a solution. So I went and I'm uh, very, uh, I mean, interacting with the DUT, with the vice chancellor there, uh, uh, you know, lovely guy, uh, Mr. Mtembo is there. So I'm telling him, sir, um, you must learn to send out students with, we come to, you, I'm sure people come to Technicon to get uh, skills with that. They, they're looking for a job, okay? Those that follow the academic field is fine. And I also deal with Professor Anesh Maharaj from the university. I'm also saying there's two types of people only in my opinion. One that's academic and that's one that's technical. One is the thinker, one is the doer. So now if you put that in place, so you gotta go back, if you wanna get into business. So nine out of 10 times you know the core that you want to do. But what, how do you put the core into the entire thing where you can put it into marketing, into admin, into finance? Then you've addressed the four components and then you'll know your point of departure. So you won't take your retirement, your pension, and you'll go and say, I want to open a franchise. You know, I want to open a Cole franchise, and I think I care because I was an admin person, and I did this, and I did that, and whatever. We have a lot. So it's not for the faint-hearted, you know. Then you'll actually, but the best of all, take a couple months or whatever it is, go into the similar business and see whether you can do it. See what is required. Go and serve your apprenticeship. And then you'll know by first week, second week, month, 
whether I can do it or not. So this is what happens. Passion makes you blinded. And, and you will see everybody is there for ribbon cutting. But after that, uh, the next day, nobody is there for you. Mm. And if you saw uh, in your office, there's only one, de- one chair uh, behind your desk. You can have plenty of chairs in front of, your, uh, in front of your desk. So at the end of the day, it's all on your shoulders. So go and do your homework. Leave your money, leave whatever it is, and go and see whether you have what it takes. Everything, whether you want to be a consultant, you've got to do your admin, you got to know finance and you got to do marketing. Now, this uh, flame grilled uh, chicken business of yours, it's one of the businesses that's leading you to the Gulf, to Dubai. How long have you been there and what are your plans? We are busy now setting up offices and that is where it's going to be our base to take it, uh, you know, throughout. And we're targeting, you know, um, South Africa, going into all the different provinces and, and thank you to Fresh Stop slash Caltex for they've got 850 sites and uh, Fresh Stop has got about 310 so the more people co- you know convert we can take that through and hopefully you know it'll gain momentum and more than anything else I'm also learning about the business concept and how do you do that how do you duplicate it and how do you maintain product excellence and I think I figured that out because it's working well. And in Dubai, uh, wh- how is it working out for you there? Well, there we almost ready with our partner to to roll out. We just got a few more things to do, and then we will uh, um, enter that uh, market from that particular. Point what is here. your feeling about the the market in Dubai at the moment? Uh, absolutely, you know we've looked at you know the, uh, our other leading brand in the similar kind of business. Uh, they doing exceptionally well, uh, that is there. But the difference with our product is that we manage to uh, look at from a pricing point of view without compromising on the quality. So we eliminated a few processes that our opposition is doing at this point in time. So we don't need to be top heavy. I think that's the model that we are looking at. And with uh, the Expo 2020 coming to Dubai, how is that going to affect uh, African-based companies like yours and many others? It it shouldn't uh, affect us. It should be a platform where we need uh, to uh, internationalize our business. And I'm going with Standard Bank, uh, you know, uh, the coming week uh, to China. So they're also exposing us to international business. And um, I have a very close working relationship with Standard Bank. Uh, there's a gentleman, the commercial director, Craig Polkinon. That's also understanding how to do business with the emerging entrepreneurs, how to do business with the first batch uh, with people like us. You know, we're not the Hilton boys or the Michael House boys or the Kirsten boys, mm-hmm. you know, out there. So where we came from, and then how did we manage to, you know, move on and how do we want to expand? So I think that is what we require is our government who played a part in my life uh, for with the BE and, you know, triple B, double E. And I have full, you know, advantage of that. So now I think we need another one uh, where it's just EE. Yeah, e- economic empowerment. You know, we'll forget the B and, and, and just go for that. So. so, but there's likely to be a lot of business in Dubai um, during this year. There's going to be like 25 million visitors from all over the world, 100,000 hotel rooms. Um, what do you think could be this act as a stimulus to business here in Africa? Well, I think you need to go and look at the product that you are offering. Uh, is this required? And, and if it's not required, whether we always use the cell phone, uh, uh, you know, thinking, you know, we never needed a cell phone, uh, but now you cannot do without a cell phone. So is there something you got that people cannot do without? Or is there something you got that people need? How do they need it? Why do they need it? You know, so you've got to be practical. Uh, w- will this appeal to me? You know? So I think it is, it is, that is what this whole thing is about, you know. Uber doesn't even own a car. Airbnb don't even own a you know, room. But, but, there is, but there, is, there is opportunities across the board. 
across the board. So, but you need to understand what you're doing and you need to be honest with yourself, you know. But go out there, you know, and, and look at uh, uh, the What sort of spectrum do you, I always say there's three economies, you know. You have the really organized economy, you have the support economy, and the third economy is the economy, uh, economy where the masses are. So now if you want to start, you don't start in the first economy. And the second economy doesn't need you because they are already a support economy. The third economy has got millions and hundreds of millions of people that you can uh, um, you know, uh, start off and, and look at your price range. You know, uh, anything under 20 rand, you can sell a meal. And uh, we're also in the satellite business, by the way. So the connectivity for the masses that is there. So you make affordable connectivity. Well, best of luck in finding that uh, mass market. I've been with CEO of KZN Oils, Rajan Reddy, here on this edition of The Entrepreneurial Edge. From me, Chris Bishop, in Johannesburg, it's goodbye. <laughs>